All right, so in this module, we're gonna start a new chapter on diffusion, and I just wanna go over some introductory uh, information about diffusion to get you thinking about the, the topic that we're gonna cover in more detail. So first of all, what is diffusion? So diffusion is the mass transport, uh, mass transport uh, mode, which relies on atomic motion. And so we're not talking about motion from stirring or something like that. Uh, we're talking about the motion from the atoms itself. The atoms are always vibrating and moving. And so you may have heard this referred to as Brownian when you're referring to gases and liquids, uh, but there's also the same thing happening um, in solids. And so the kind of classic examples of this are if you drop a, a liquid dye into water, uh, it starts out in a very localized place, and then those dye molecules, as you kind of represent here, uh, will expand out through random motion uh, as the atom, uh, the dye atoms and the water molecules uh, move, and it will expand out and uh, eventually it will diffuse into the entire material. And so that's where the diffuse word comes from and kind of diffusing into the the rest of the material. So again, it, the, the main thing here is it's from those random uh, atomic motions, not, for example, stirring or some type of motion caused from outside influences. All right, so let's kind of briefly talk about some of the uh, cases where diffusion is important. And there are many examples in materials and in the processing of materials. And the first one I want to talk about is case hardening. So case hardening is where we have a, a metal, um, for example, steel. And let's say we have a steel part here. Well, if we are able to diffuse and add carbon to the surface of that steel um, structure, we add more and more carbon, and more and more carbon goes into interstitial sites in the steel structure and causes a hardening of that material. And it only does it on the outside where the carbon is coming from. And so that makes the steel harder and therefore stronger and more resistant to um, impact and so forth. So case hardening is basically diffusing carbon atoms uh, into the surface to make it stronger. Also, um, the area of semiconductors. Um, so you, you may know that semiconductors rely on silicon. Well, silicon is typically made in very, 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 very pure um, amounts. So we have silicon wafers that are extremely pure. From there, though, we actually like to dope in um, other materials, such as phosphorus, to make different types of uh, semiconductors like n-type. And so in this case, it's very similar to the case hardening where we start with silicon, and then we deposit a phosphorus-rich layer on the surface, and then we heat it up um, in order for the atoms of phosphorus to diffuse and transport into the surface and to make these doped regions which act differently than the pure silicon itself. So this again is um, important. Uh, diffusion is very important for the uh, creation of what's called PN junctions in semiconductors. All right, so let's think about metals in particular. So in metals, we often think of a very simple uh, problem where we have two pure metals. So we have, and they're basically stuck together, or they're just uh, in physical contact. So we have one of these orange atoms over here. This is a pure metal. It's in its crystal structure and so forth. And then it's right next to another metal, so the gray atoms, uh, and they're basically in contact. So there's just a interface right here. And we can represent that um, as concentration, right? At the beginning over here on the left side, it's all orange, and then right at the uh, interface, it goes down to zero, and then vice versa for the gray. So this is just looking at the percent of uh, amounts total. So this is, uh, so this is known as um, uh, interdiffusion. So if we place these pure metals next to each other and we allow it to diffuse at high temperatures, what we see 
is after some amount of time, you see the interdiffusing or swapping of the elements. So over here on the originally pure orange side, you see some gray atoms that have found their way in. And then over here on the gray side, you see some orange atoms. And you see the concentration of orange going down on the left and the concentration of gray going down on the right. And that's um, uh, juxtaposed or, or um, uh, opposed by the increase of orange on the right and the increase of gray on the left. So these are kind of swapping positions here. So thinking about this um, interdiffusion, what I want you to think about, and I want you to sort of think back to chapter five, which is on imperfections, I want you to brainstorm and think of what mechanism or mechanisms might allow these metals to interdiffuse. So we just said that they, they move, but what actually allows them to move? And so think back to chapter five, brainstorm an idea or two, uh, and you're going to write that in the quiz, and then we're going to come back and discuss. Okay, so based on chapter five, we're going to see that there's two main ways in which this interdiffusion can occur. So the first I want to talk about is vacancies. So if all of the sites are occupied, if we have a perfect crystal on both sides, there's really no space for the atoms to exchange positions. So what happens in real materials is that vacancies are present. We, we saw that in the previous chapter. And atoms are basically going to exchange with vacancies. And so um, they basically swap uh, spots in these interstitial, or sorry, these substitutional uh, materials. And so our rate at which interdiffusion happens is going to be dependent on the number of vacancies and then how much energy it costs to go into the vacancies. So you're going to see something like this. This orange atom hops into this vacancy and that leaves a vacancy over here and an orange atom over here. And then the whole process can happen with another. So this orange atom can move here, and you get the vacancy here, and you've got this atom which is moved. And so this process can happen, and uh, again, the darker atom can move into that spot. And so this is the process that can happen uh, for vacancies. And so this is known as vacancy diffusion, and this is a very common mechanism. But we, the, the important thing is we have to have the empty space for that to occur. The other option would be those interstitial sites, right? So this doesn't happen for things that are large, but it happens for the smaller atoms, like say carbon, um, and those can move in the various interstitial sites. So if there is an interstitial atom here, um, it can basically move through uh, the kind of uh, narrow tunnel between these atoms and move into a different interstitial, and it can go into this position. So this has to be with smaller atoms, uh, but the advantage here is that there's lots of interstitials open, and so uh, this tends to be more rapid than vacancy diffusion because the number of interstitial sites is much larger than the number of vacancies that we have. 